I don't like lots of people. Missoula is too damn big. And there are people here who are dedicated to no more development, period. And uh, I'm kind of astonished uh, because I have some, some friends who uh, are very much against any more development. You know it's going to grow. You know it's going to develop. There's not a lot that can be done about that. Uh, I guess it's trying to do it in an orderly fashion. It just doesn't take away this small town atmosphere and uh, and uh, ruin some of the scenery or the beauty of it or the accessibility to all of the things. In Ravelli County, being roughly the same size, we could have 8 million people here. It's roughly the size of Los Angeles. Maybe we need 8 million people here. There has to be a balance and use the common sense and sometimes the federal laws stand in the way of doing it the right way. The Endangered Species Act, you wouldn't have shoot, shovel, and shut up if it was working. And when I talk about the difference between urban and rural philosophies, you cannot begin to understand how hard it is to explain a healthy environment to somebody from downtown New York City. happy with the wilderness, it just ought to be managed, it has to be managed. We need fire in the wilderness. You can start it in April when you have people to watch it and it's moist and it's going to burn slowly, not burn down the mineral soil, or you can wait till August where Mother Nature starts a hundred of them at once, you ain't got the assets and nothing can stop them. It's just stupid. I point my finger at the radical environmentalists who have pretty much butchered the timber industry and impoverished a whole area. Is there time, is there space? I didn't know I was in a race. Are we in balance with nature? What a morning, what a day. In my hands, nature's way. You know, this is my land. Well, yeah, it is your land, but don't you have some responsibility? You know, we're just gonna trash it. The Endangered Species Act is a tool that was designed and has been implemented to take control of land. That's all it is. With this hammer and with this nail, up the mountains, wide and trail. Flowers bloom in the middle run. We're gonna see how the shoe fits. The other foot. I think the key word here is stewardship. I hear the scream of a thousand teeth. Cloud of dust and the job's complete. I can't believe it's God's design. To leave this field broken by. Well, I think we need to protect our river corridors. It could have easily been subdivided, split up, uh, and uh, have, a, have a very negative impact on, on the resource. Ecosystem, there's another good word for you. Riparian corridor is, uh, is essential to, to, uh, to maintain that. Basically, a setback is a dictated distance from some activity to the edge of the stream. What could or could not happen in that zone the biggest concern that I heard was a lot of folks were losing opportunity to use their land. The public was going to have a right to cross their land. The issue is, does not center around the resource, it centers around politics. As we you know, position and posture ourselves individually and as groups, cultures, and against each other at all levels, uh, for for all of history, and I just you know, I just don't know where I ask the question, where's the love in it? Torn between my heart and mind, agony and joy combined. Nothing children left to find, what a legacy. To leave behind. I care about the vital uh, future of your offspring. Leave behind. Don't you? Leave behind. Can I ask a question? Who decided that no species should ever be allowed to become extinct? Well, Darwinists insist that humans evolve from species that no longer exist. 
How does it make sense for those same people to claim that all species should be saved? If that had been the case with the species humans evolved from, would human beings be what they are today? That's the attitude. Oh, I, oh, we don't care about no future generations. They're not here yet. There are species, I would venture to say, that existed and became extinct, and we never even knew about them. And what impact have they had on us? I don't know. How can we sustain ourselves? How can we create a, and maintain a vital Earth community of human beings and all sentient life? The ultimate solution is everybody's got to, everybody's got to, you know, talk. It's a mutual respect deal, you know. And if it doesn't go both ways, you know, everybody loses. Because the Earth is a closed system. Last time I checked, there's no stuff coming here from Mars. because there are people people that care care about where they live you know When I build a house, I don't cause somebody to move here. If that were the case, I would still be building 30 or 40 homes a year and the people would come over the hill and buy it. There's a large group of people that don't seem to, or haven't supported development in our county. And why do you think that is? Um, I can only speculate that a number of them have come from somewhere, they found the better route, it was their idea of utopia and they really don't want to see change. There's one friend of mine is very open when he says, we don't want anybody else here. And I say, well, when I crossed the Missouri in 2000, when I was coming out here, uh, I tried to lock the gate, but I couldn't, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you can't stop it. You know, not that they're bad people, but most of the folks that I see that tend to be anti-development have moved here with some resources. A lot of them don't have to make a living here. There's a, um, a standing against the uh, need to plan. When you got more people, there's more friction between them. You need to have zoning. You know, I mean, I've been through some hot public meetings. It wasn't as bad as pitchforks, but... Um, <laughs> to keep a watch on the so-called elected officials. Section 76-2-311-1, which says... This is a thinly veiled attempt for government to take over the rights of people. We can. Okay, good, do it. Am I clear? Or... And we're rising up, just to be honest with you. The city of Hamilton strives to make its government operations fully transparent. You are not going to tell us what you're going to do. The only reason that we get more laws is so they can put more people doing stupid things that they don't need to do. The, the, the idea of, uh, was presented into the community and um, was uh, rejected wholeheartedly. Uh, ultimately, uh, ending up with our growth policy being thrown out on its ear uh, by referendum. So the reason we don't have zoning now is because the county commissioners blew it. They got some uh, crazy uh, liberal tree huggers out of uh, uh, Denver to do the uh, plan. These people wanted you to only plant native plants. This community has historically been very staunch about preserving what people perceive as their, um, their rights to, you know, uh, when it comes to their property. And it's not uncommon to hear people say, well, last time I checked, it was my name on the deed. Like if my little piece of eight acres is in that building, I need There is no building. Oh, whatever, that land is right with the annex into the city. There is no annexation plan. You are making decisions for us that, that we have nothing to say about, and it's wrong. 
Am I going to be allowed to build my blacksmith shop? That's all. I got a permit two years ago. I'm building the thing. That's what I need to know. So I can build my blacksmith shop along the merry way. Absolutely. Thank you. Good deal. I'm out of here. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> Just, uh, they started sneaking stuff in unbeknownst to people. Uh, the people that were going to be affected are the ones that had no idea of what was going on. And what you got is like a runaway belt sander. Have you ever seen that? When the switch sticks, the only thing you can do is rip the cord out, and that's what the growth policy is. And unless it directly impacts you, you don't get real worried about things. So to just come into a meeting and start shouting, you know, well, we don't. We don't care what you're doing, we just want to stop it. I think without planning, you end up getting some of what we have in the valley. If you want fire protection, you can't build in the middle of the woods and then expect me to build a fire station to service your stupidity. This is, uh, you know, this is part and parcel to why we continue in a divided manner. And I want to state for the record that if the city attempts to do this, I think they will be subject to a lawsuit. And I think whoever brings that lawsuit will win. We can all get really emotional about what we feel is important, but uh, you know, if we can discuss the issues and try and uh, come to resolution on what's best for both sides, both parties, um, I think that would be best for, for our community, you know, so. Most people on opposing views, especially politically, they don't really listen to each other. They wait until the other side finishes making those noises that they make so that they can say what they want to say. Uh, it was a travesty. Saw the will of the people being uh, uh, usurped. They were uh, clearly not in favor of the subject matter, which was zoning, and uh, the vote went totally against them, even though that there's plenty of evidence to support the masses not wanting what they were proposing. The council has never discussed zoning. The growth policy has nothing to do with someone's intent to zone. They, they today uh, opened a barn door and the horses are now out. Uh, we'll end up in much higher taxes for everyone. We're elected to have a 50 year old and the decisions we make here should be something that looks out to the horizon. Does this kind of thing happen a lot here? Absolutely, Con continuously, and the legislators will not listen to the to the public once they're elected, especially the liberal Democratic legislators. If you contrast that to the constitutional liberties that we had, as I had as a child, and all the things that went along with it, which were based squarely on the Constitution, uh, there's been a dramatic change. First, I don't, I don't think we have a lot of extreme left or extreme right. I think the extreme left and extreme, extreme right are uh, probably more vocal. I would almost think you have maybe 20% far left, 20% far right, and I would almost think more than half of our population would be in the middle. No, no, there's a movement going on in Ravalli County. It's called Celebrating Conservatism. The mainstream media and the people that want to create these changes always make the, the honest thinking citizen think that he's the only one out there that has that kind of an opinion. There's a lot of people in this country that just do not believe what's being told them anymore. We're all liars at some level, telling people things that make us seem important. And that's what I call creating virtual ground. And so we do this at the individual level and we do this at the group level. And we go off and say, well, we believe in this and this and this, and so we're coming over there to help you get it, because you need it. You know, we hear something, we get it out on the grapevine, quick. 
And I think the internet is what's screwing up the powers that be that are trying to corrupt the world. And they can't uh, edit the internet at this point yet. But I would say, you know why the internet's so successful? Government hasn't figured out how to screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> The biggest challenge with running a, an independent paper, well, I, would be really the corporate competition, I would say. And you have a news media that basically shares the same interest as any other large corporation, like your pharmaceuticals, uh, that share, share those same interests over a lot of issues, simply because they, too, are a huge corporation. What we try to do is get people with different political views to do, to send letters or articles, and um, as long as they're, they're, they're fall within the, as long as they fall within the confines of our uh, editorial policy, which is very forthright. But I've never been a joiner of parties. And so I don't know if that's helped me uh, in my position uh, by, not, by, by having people not immediately identify me with one party or another in their disputes or whatever. You know, a Republican or a Democrat, independent, we have these different views. And so I believe they come to the table with their own agendas to push their, you know, their manners and styles of, of their beliefs into, into the community. I don't believe there's any conspiracy with the paper and us because I don't think the paper cares about us as much as they're just going to print some stuff. So I don't think they're covering up anything. Independent, once again, is an important word there. It's not really being guided. No one's really got their thumb on it. I look at the people who vandalized my distribution sites, uh, the people who went on the uh, on the Ravalli Republic uh, website and talked about how they went to people who displayed the first edition and uh, threatened them and told them that we're going to boycott your place of business if you keep showing that thing in here. You are very, very weak in your ability to, to, to argue your point if you have to deny people the, 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 the ability to read something that you don't agree with. The Rivali of Republic, they won't print anything from any person out here unless it's all, that's, that newspaper, I don't know how that's all governed. <laughs> what do you make of all the people that send their letters in? They're not hateful, they're not slanderous, libelous, but they never get pr published. There are a lot of crazy letter writers out there. I've had some of my own letters to go unpublished. Our letter to the editors is a very strong part of our paper. No profanity and no libelous statements. If you have accusations, provide proof. You know, since Lee Enterprises took over or came to dominate, let's say, the Montana Newspaper Association by simply owning so many of the newspapers in the state, uh, a lot of things have changed, and one of them is they no longer give awards for investigative reporting. I don't, I've, I've found that interesting. And a lot of times the power that we have is to just to put it out there so that people see what's happening to this individual. And that can help straighten things out. The basic thing is that if they would take one of the crimes and one of the rapes and actually prosecute the people that did it, people might be happy about it, but instead they keep lying about it. The local paper's lying about everything. There's been four suicides in the yak, and a couple of them were a bullet to the back of the head and no gun. You know, they call them the Montana suicides. And I'm just all over the internet, and I got all these stories, and I'm just telling the truth about what's happening to the victims. I wished it was a year ago, and I didn't know this stuff. I would give anything to go back in time and not know because I just wanted to stick up for this one woman that had been raped that I, I knew her as a baby. And so I wanted to stick up for her. Well, all these other rape victims come in. And now I have people anonymously chatting me. I have counsel. I'm just a whistleblower. You know, I'm just, a, I'm just writing about giving people a voice that aren't heard. I don't have a different side. I'm not a conservative. I'm not a liberal. I'm not a Republican. I mean, to be honest with you, um, let's come out here. I've never even voted. I don't vote. I just blog. At some point, you're going to lose it, and we will have to take you down. Yes, that means just what it implies. 
or somebody is going to get pissed off enough to shut you up permanently, I hope I'm there to see it. So it's definitely somebody within the city court or the district court level system that's stalking me. I've proved it every day, but they know they're above the law. They must know they have the sheriff in their pocket. They must know they have the judge in their pocket because I'm not, they are not afraid. I, and I took it to a local judge and she refused me an order. And so I came to Hamilton to get a, try to get a protective order because he lives in Stevensville, like I said, works in Missoula. They told me it was out of their jurisdiction. They refused to give me an order because he wasn't a family member and other reasons the judge gave me. I thought I'd try Hamilton, but I'm not getting any help here either. So I, I'm not the type of person to just hide under my bed while bad things happen to other people. I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna fight. And if I lose my life for it, then I do. But I won't die a coward. And I'm just some, I'm not a fence rider. And, and the days that are here now, we can't. The fence is dissolving. There's no way, you have to pick a side. So if I walk into a room and turn a light on, does that mean I created what's happening in the room? No, I'm just showing a light on it. I don't hate anybody. I'm not anti-government. I'm not anti-police. I'm just the truth. And so that's my mission. This is the truth. In any town in the United States, where you're going to see patriotism in a parade, but the real problems that area might face isn't exposed, and everyone feels good after the experience because we're showing our true colors and our patriotism. However, some of the participants in the parade and obviously some of the people viewing may have had judicial issues, law enforcement issues, and have no idea because they have no context in our area that that's a major problem and their rights were infringed upon. And by interjecting patriotic things like parades, it, it further normalizes the problems that we see in our specific area and possibly in other areas of the country. They beat us with our own flag. You know, obviously we want to pay tribute to those who served our country. However, for the residents here, it's just a renewal of the obligation to continue on with the way things are, not knowing that things can get a lot better. Every day, five times. Yeah, but you're I can walk down that sidewalk, Tony. They want us. That's just why I want to talk to you. They're trying to get us. No, we're going to do it and we're going to win. I was going to ask her if she was afraid. No. You're not harassing if you don't even talk to them. I was going to talk to the camera no. and go, she is afraid she won't give me her name. No. Did you ask That's her all I was going to do. do it? No. I have five cars here. Take us Doesn't matter. If I'm on a public sidewalk, and they will take the I can camera. do jumping jacks. And they'll take the camera too. I can get damn near naked. We don't want to do that. Hi. Hi there. Is, uh, is Nabley in? Are you in the library this time? I'll be right with you. Thank you. Awesome. All right, reading this letter for me, the library director has no legal authority to remove a patron's privileges. This is found in Montana statutes as MCA 221311. And um, basically, I, I talk about how she violates um, 
giving you guys false information with that letter, which continued today. And it says, at no time did I ever cause a disturbance, nor was I ever asked to leave the library, which is on your letter, part of the requirements to finally remove their privileges. I was never asked to leave that library. I see this as two possible counts as false information to the police. One today with our contact, and the other one with that written correspondence that was sent to your department. Okay. Let, let me just tell you the information I got today from Ms. Langstaff. Okay. Um, she said that she has given the authority to affect all policies and rules by the board as the director of the library, meaning that she has the authority to trespass you from the library. That's I'm not just telling, I'm just telling you that the board apparently the board. has given her permission to do this because that's what she's telling me. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. The board has to do it, not her. It's very clear. There's nothing in this document that says anything about a library director. It says a board. I know what's going to happen here. Nothing's going to happen, and then they're going to send me a letter banning me from the library, even though there's a sworn affidavit. I'll bet money on it. I brought a letter about your police department, about this area, to the president. That's why I got banned, okay? Well, I, I have no involvement in that. Why did the library director bring a book here? Based on the letter, it is trespassing, okay? Based on the letter, it's a crime. Okay, well, I'm not going to argue with you. You're not going to do anything either. So, so about, here's, here's the deal. I'm going to warn you right now. Warn don't, me? Don't. I'm going to warn you right now. Don't go back to the library. Until okay. you charge her with, with two counts of, of giving false information to the police. Again, I'll let you finish now. I'll speak. I haven't been to the library, sir. Don't warn me. You don't have to warn me, okay? Please uphold the law. Okay. I'm going to warn you. I'm going to warn you. Don't go back to the library Thank you. or the grounds. It's library property or you will be charged with trespassing, okay? Why? Because you've been given a letter saying that you're not allowed on the premises. Let's leave. Okay, let's go. Thank you very much. No problem. Do you believe that? No. Yeah. He said I, right to me, don't go there. He swears an oath to uphold the law. He can't, it's like, can you not read, officer? Can you not read? You know what I should have said to him? I want to warn you. I'm going to be your boss in six months, and you're done. You failed your oath of office right in front of me. Bye-bye, Snavely. This is why we need to vote, so we can get this crap out of this town. So you know what? Screw this library. You're going to be mine in about six months. This is why I'm working hard. This is why I'm running for mayor right here. No problem. I'll, I'll just work harder and get more votes. No problem. presented us with this binder, which is a letter to um, Barack Obama written by, is it Rob Pilkey? Roy. Roy Pilkey. Um, and um, requested that we add it to our collection. Um, we're trying to bring about change. Mm -hmm. So, a good, good spot for it? And we yeah. are, and we are you recording you just right. as part of what you are saying for this document. Um, this yeah. is just public comment. I'm not saying anything special because there's a camera on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm going to say this is definitely creative nonfiction. It's not something I would, you know, present, but it's, it's not unfactual. There's been some pretty unfortunate things that have happened in our area. And my friend Peter, uh, also known as Roy P., um, has put this into writing. Thank wow. you. Okay, good. So you're happy? Yeah. With absolutely. What we're to pay for it. Thank you for a This is a First Amendment issue. I, you know, I want to say that very clearly. Well, thank That's you for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for being interested in it. Thank you too. Okay. It will continue. Yeah. <laughs> So, where are we? I always thought that Hamilton was kind of schizo because you've got extreme liberals and extreme conservatives and kind of nothing in between at that time. It was really fun. And the letters we got were really fun because we didn't know how to answer them. 
Uh, you're, you're immediately offending 50% of the population. Now. But, but yeah, I've got to tell you, Ravalli County is one of the most unique counties in the whole state of Montana. It's fun to come down here. And we are truly a reflection of society. We've got fat, skinny, old and young, rich and poor, dumb and smart. There is no literacy test to run for God last week. We are kind of a reflection of you, you know? I'm... I don't believe the Constitution is something that can be debated or that is interpreted. I think it was very well interpreted by the founders. Fighting between the two parties is accomplishing nothing. And the two parties are so close together in so many things. I think we desperately need a third party. It's one of those things where this guy could be my buddy on nine out of ten issues, not really, but we agree on him or something. And that tenth one, we disagree, but it, somehow it polarizes us because how could you be that way about that? How could you think that, you know? You know, global warming is the most monumental hoax that, that mankind has ever been subjected to. This is the more beautiful, but soon to be skinned over beautiful Bitterroot Valley. he trusts, he'll show those that are corrupt. End the story. people you get together, they've got to be some people in there who are... 57% of our
Supreme Court's made a big difference in development of democracy. Perhaps their greatest mistake was when they declared corporations to be people. Oh yeah, but it's made up of individuals on the border. Yeah. Whoever interprets the law, how, how they see it, and uh, you get what you got in America. The more power the lobbyists have, the more power the cor corporations have. We don't even have any information on how much money the insurance companies are taking out of Montana. The less we know, the easier it is to manipulate us. People have sort of boiled down the Constitution, you know, into sound bites. Now, the Constitution just means my right to pursue happiness. Maybe the uh, Alexander Hamilton was right that only the intelligentsia and the landowners should vote. Only the landed gentry should only vote. Only the landed gentry should vote. He might have been onto something. The people are not supposed to be afraid of the government. The government's supposed to be afraid of the people. So let's get that situation back. When the sun is high, when the sun has risen, when the bright sun warms our face When the sun has risen Bringing light to the darkness They stay forever in this place They stay forever in this place They stay forever in This place This place Blacks voted for Barack because of the historical significance of having a black man become president. And believe me, I don't downplay that. He is destroying the country because he is so radical and I think so anti-American. Right now, this country is in a sorry, sorry state. We're going down the road to socialism. Our side loses, can't we try and support that person to do the best job possible and then next time he's up for an election or whatever, try and get our guy back in there. But that's the other thing I hate. Somebody else gets elected and all of a sudden everybody's just trying to find dirt on him or trying to make up conspiracy theories in my opinion. And instead of just trying to trying to work with it. I don't want to get into that zone of be all freaked out and, and paranoia and conspiracy theory and everybody's sending me all this stuff. I just want to tell the truth and tell people stories and really help people and try to help make people's lives better. We'll just either remain divided or and crash or we'll come together and survive. I don't want to hate you and I don't want you to hate me. Because that's getting us nowhere. Look at where it's gotten us. The governor, ha government of Hamilton, the whole city council had to go to anger management or counseling or something like that. The county government's trying to pacify the people by having um, meetings throughout the county. It's called civil discourse. They're teaching us how to get along with each other. I'm trying to figure out how that's going to help when you have corruption and you have just blatant evil going on in the county. People have a lot of animosity towards each other, but I don't think it's supposed to be towards each other. You know, I think it just ended up that way because of some kind of scary oppression. And I think it's all about money. Uh, it's all about uh, getting rich really quick and being in power. Being an American, you know, and traveling all over the world, doing a lot of things, uh, were some things that I took for granted that I don't have here. The rule of law rather than the rule of man. I don't hate cops. 
So I, if a stranger pulled up behind me and needed something, I'd rather that happen than a cop. I'm scared to death of the cops. I say to you guys, reach out a little more. Get to know the people in town. They're just all in cahoots. That's what it seems to us. That from here, the large part of Helena, that they're just part of this big group. And once your name is on their blacklist, you're done. We the people, that's us. We've been labeled as terrorists nationally. We have been lied to for so long from every level of government that when you get right down here in little over Valley County and you see county commissioners who are viewed with absolute distrust. And I'm doing my darndest to make them very afraid of me. I got a big mouth and I'm going to use it. Evolving, inspiring to become something greater than we've ever been. I hope that things turn around for the good of the people in Hamilton, but I don't like the government of Hamilton. I don't know where to come down on it. There's a pungent south wind blowing in from the camp of continuance, tradition, the enemy of change. That's what, that's the biggest challenge in this community. You can't move forward when you're looking backwards. We're gonna prevail without violence. There's no need for violence at all. Uh, hopefully we all get the right things done to save Revali County and save Hamilton, I hope, you know. about our story. Yeah, it's gotta be interesting to tie together the, ex the extreme views you're gonna get from. <laughs> it's hard, you know, keep it fair and get everybody's viewpoint across. It's, yeah. It's not it's a juggling act. Well, uh, and I think the hard part is probably I've learned to be somewhat politically correct and try and stay halfway on the. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna venture out to either direction too far.